What's going on everybody and welcome back to Comic Breakdown. If you guys are new to the channel, do me a favor, hit that sub button, hit that notification bell, make sure you're not missing any of the awesome content that we have coming out. With this video, we are jumping into Immortal X-Men, issue number 2. If you weren't able to catch issue number 1, be sure to check out the link in my description, as well as the top of this video. It'll get you completely caught up on everything that has been going on thus far. But what issue number 1 really showed us was Sinister. All of his scheming, all of his conniving, looking like he has an entire clone farm of Moira's. Not sure how many times he has reset things using her abilities. But with that great revelation, we have to put it on the back burner. With Magneto making his exit from the Quiet Council, we have Hope Summers, who is elected to take his seat. Going up against Selene, she did not take this very well at all, using her magic to summon a kaiju. You. This is all to prove the single fact that Krakoa, they are very vulnerable to magic. Be sure to buy the comic, support the industry, and with that being said, let's dive into this breakdown. Alright gang, so we pick up with Hope Summers looking directly at this monstrositous beast, the one summoned by Selene, and thinking to herself she's got good news and bad news. The good news, she's on the Quiet Council. Council. The bad news, this is now her responsibility to fight. Of course, she doesn't have to do this fight alone. With many other mutants joining by her side, they are doing everything they can to fight this thing off. For Hope Summers, this is like riding a bicycle, jumping right back into the fray. All of her instincts still exactly how they used to be. This is where she finds herself in her best element. As she leads mutants into combat, off in the distance we have Magneto and Storm. Not really sure if they should intervene, Magneto thinks it's a good idea to show a united front. Even not being on the Quiet Council, he was once a member. Him going and fighting this kaiju, with Storm fighting this kaiju. It shows that not only Mars, aka Arako, is united in this fight and the decisions the Quiet Council has made, as well as individuals that are no longer on the council, but their words still hold some kind of sway. And so Storm and Magneto, they jump into this fight. The two of them together, they are unstoppable. The truth of the matter, each of them could handle this kaiju all by themselves. It may take them a little bit longer to take it down, but this dynamic duo working together, Magneto fills this thing full of shrapnel. And that's when Storm brings down the lightning, splattering this kaiju all over the ocean. Unfortunately, this thing reforms. Destiny begins to get a very weird feeling. Whatever this beast is, it's messing with her ability to see her visions. What they are quickly able to uncover is that this beast connects multiple dimensions. Any kind of hurt that they put on this damages space in that area. It damages the gateways, connections to other worlds, a little bit of everything. They have to find a way to try and stop this thing without actually killing it. With Hope on the front lines, she starts evacuating as many people as possible. Standing her ground, Exodus does not leave her side, letting him know that when they first met, she had taken his powers. She saw that the more people believing in him, the more more powerful he becomes. Exodus being the most religious individual on this island really next to Nightcrawler. He sees Hope Summers as the messiah. With her quickly blowing that whole shenanigans off. The whole idea that she's a messiah and she's amazing so on and so forth. Her thing is being able to mimic powers. With them believing in her much more than they do Exodus. Using their powers combined. It gives them the opportunity to hold off these assaults. As the two of them are holding their own. Off in the distance, we have Sinister watching all of this unfold. He takes this as an opportunity to show everyone on Krakoa what Sinister is truly all about. Believing that a lot of people forgot this. Believing him to be a joke. Opening up his own little gateway, he finds himself at the edge of the water. Taking a serum that he has created, he injects it into his own arm. We see him become a literal monster. As Kaiju Sinister rushes in, Charles Xavier has to ask the question, What are you doing? What Charles really wants to know is what the heck did you just do to yourself? 
This is an experiment this Sinister has been working on, taking a lot of mutant genes and mashing them all together. While this is very unstable, this is the first time that he has actually been able to use it for this amount of time without having any issues. Charles worrying that this might be a bigger problem than the kaiju they are currently facing. Nonetheless, we see Sinister dragging the kaiju out to deeper water, saying that this thing will either dissolve or it will explode. They've already learned that they can't kill it, but they can slow it down. With the explosion, it blows to pieces. Nightcrawler grabbing hold of Sinister and bringing him back onto land. Every time they do this kind of damage, it really messes with space and time. But this is what what they had to do to get that opportunity to really try to figure out a plan and what the heck they are going to do to solve this issue. Grabbing hold of everybody's mind, Charles has a very, very quick emergency meeting, and they all know at this point Celine is just biding her time. She is waiting for the mutants to come crawling over to them, because once they do, she thinks that she is going to secure her seat on the Quiet Council, that they will have no other choice than to bring her on board. And as it stands, this seems to be their only option. So it is agreed that all of the captains, they will hold off the kaiju when it reforms. Charles Xavier will try to appeal to Selene, try and figure out some kind of diplomatic way of solving this issue. As we stand in the eye of the storm, Destiny comes up to Hope and lets her know that she has just had a vision. What she saw was Selene being assassinated, and in a one second time frame, she will drop dead right in front of the window. Now, either by design or by accident. Destiny telling this information to Hope, it gave her the idea. Going and finding magic, getting as close as she can to her, she is able to mimic her abilities. Having mere seconds to do what needs to be done, she finds herself falling outside of the building that Selene is at taking her rifle and pointing it directly at her head. She takes the shot, and in that one second time frame, she drops dead. Not any ordinary bullet could kill Selene, but this bullet, the one made of Mysterium, it has the properties of anti-magic. And just like that, she finds herself back on Krakoa. That's what takes us down to the hatchery. We have Selene, who is being brought back to life. And unfortunately for her, when you get out of this egg, it's a little bit confusing. You're still trying to grab hold of your thoughts and, and all of your senses. All of, It's just sensory overload to the max. This gives them the prime opportunity. Exodus grabbing hold of her head. He is able to take control, finds the fail-safe shutoff switch for this kaiju. The gate monster disintegrates and flies back to wherever it came from. Just like that, the job is done. And we see how truly brutal Hope can be when her back is against the wall. Picking up a little bit later, we have Hope who is explaining herself to the Quiet Council, letting them know that she took an opportunity and because of it, that kaiju was taken down. That there were no Krakoan laws broken in this manner. With most of the council actually agreeing with her, they would have had to bring her before the council, have a whole trial, put her inside of Krakoa. This avoids all of that completely. Now she waits in queue. The question has to arise though. Charles Xavier asking, when it is her time to be resurrected, will you do it? Hope not giving him a straight answer, letting him know that that is a discussion for another time. Picking up with Mystique and Destiny. Ever since that creature had arrived, whatever it did to space and time, it is also messing with her head. In an instant, we see her fall down to the ground, repeating over and over that you're a ghost. And that will be the end of this issue. So let me know what you guys think down in the comments. This one definitely focused on our girl Hope Summers. Now being a part of the Quiet Council. For a long time now, we have seen her softer side. Her caring side. Her giving side. Resurrecting mutant after mutant. But now here in this leadership role. Thrown into combat. She operates at maximum capacity. And we have to believe that Destiny set up that situation. Situation. Without being tipped off about this idea, there's a good chance that Hope would have never done this. And so Destiny is definitely still playing all of her games. But it seems this beast messing with all of space and time, it somehow is affecting her. It's making her possibly even remember things from over a century ago. And then we have Sinister. While they definitely didn't hit on any of the Moira stuff, 
they did expose really something new that he has been messing with. One of his prototypes that he's been working on for a long time. And while we have known this, this was his debut to all of Krakoa. He's also trying to earn himself some brownie points. He's trying to show that he's not a joke. That he is a contender in this fight. The truth is, if they knew how much he is doing, how much scheming he has going on in the background, they would take him off the board right freaking now. Because he is arguably the biggest threat to Krakoa as it stands. I really was hoping that we would dive more into the whole Moira clone idea. Sinister just being able to repeat things over and over and over again. Using Sinister clones to go and do that, downloading all of their information into his mind, having a, a whole girth of knowledge. Hopefully in the next issue, we're going to get a lot more in-depth explanation of what all of that actually means. But it was really nice to see Hope Summers taking that prominent role taking that leadership role. As soon as she got that title, she was on the ground running. I suspect that we can see very big things in her future. Let me know your thoughts. Let me know your theories. If you would like to support the channel, you can always do so by hitting the super thanks button. This button will let you donate directly to the channel and every little bit helps us out. If you can't do that, do me a favor, hit that like button, hit that sub button, make sure you hit that notification bell, and until the next breakdown.